guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, you'll see how to make the most of your visit to the Harry Potter Studios in London. First off, let's talk about tickets. You need to get tickets several months in advance. I didn't know this and I tried to get tickets only one month before my trip. Everything was already sold out and there was no wait list. Now there is a way around this and I'm going to go over that with you, but keep in mind that if you can plan way ahead of time, that really is best. So what do you do if tickets are sold out? First, you can try the studio's official website to see if the date you need opens up. If a day does become available, it lights up blue. A lot of the time, people make changes to their tickets. They change either the day or the time that they want to arrive at the studios. You have to check this really often though, daily, even hourly, because if there is an opening, it's taken almost right away. I looked every day, several times a day, until the day I needed finally opened up. So does this method work? Yes. But is it stressful? Definitely. So again, if you can plan ahead, please do so. And an alternative to this is getting tickets from a third-party tour company. Oftentimes these are package tours and they include transportation from London to the studios. Two companies you can look at are Golden Tours and Viator. A standard ticket to the studios is £45, but these package tours can go as high as £100 or more. Try to avoid this if you can, but if you have no other option, these might be the way to go. I've included links to all the tours in the description box below. Now, if you have tickets but you don't have transportation reserved, you can get to the studios from London by train. You'll need to take a train from Euston Station to Watford Junction. This is a 20 to 40 minute ride. Make sure to leave your hotel early. The day I needed to get to the studios, there was a climate protest and the metro I needed was blocked off. I had to walk with a large group of Londoners to the next available metro. And this set me back about half an hour. So I was really glad I left the hotel with plenty of time. From Watford Junction, there's a shuttle that'll take you to the studios. The shuttle is only a 15 minute ride to the studios and it's two pounds round trip. They only take cash, so make sure to come prepared. I was so excited when we finally arrived. I practically ran out of the bus. I just couldn't believe I was finally there. I walked up to the entrance and just in front you see two wizards chess pieces. The line to enter the studios isn't very long and it moves pretty quickly. You're also given a passport when you arrive and it has all kinds of fun activities that you can take part in while on the tour. Once inside, you get a glimpse of some of your favorite characters, including the Hungarian Horntail from the Goblet of Fire. Voldemort and the Malfoys are also here to greet you. And just a few steps away, you can see some of the costumes from Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. There is a second line inside to enter the first soundstage, but again, this line moves really quickly and there's all kinds of neat things for you to see while you wait. I was greeted by Ronald Weasley himself. While you're in the line, be sure to check out all the stills and posters from the films. Further along the line, you get a glimpse of your very first set piece, the cupboard under the stairs. Next, you're shown a short film on the making of the Harry Potter movies. And right after the film ends, you're taken into the Great Hall. They open these beautiful golden doors and you step inside, and you're just in awe that you're actually standing where they shot the films. The Great Hall is absolutely a dream come true. You really feel like you're in the movie. The filmmakers used a real stone floor for this set, as they had about 450 actors in here at a time. Also, don't forget to take your picture with the professors at the front of the hall. I also made sure to stop by the Slytherin table, and I gave all the passing Gryffindors my most menacing look. After you exit the Great Hall, you see all kinds of amazing set pieces, props, and costumes. You also get a close-up look at the Grand Staircase and the Hogwarts portraits just above it. Next up, you see the Mirror of Irised and the Portrait of the Fat Lady. Also, the Gryffindor common room and the boys' dormitory. So we made it to the potion classroom. I'm super excited um, to check it out. Let's have a look. <laughs> the potions classroom is so cool. They've got so many neat things brewing here. Watch out, Gryffindors. Snape expects top marks for today's lesson. 
Next, I saw the clock tower pendulum used in The Prisoner of Azkaban. And right after that, I checked in on Professor Dumbledore and his office. A fun fact is that many of the portraits in Hogwarts are actually portraits of the crew members that worked on the film. Two other fun set pieces to look at are Umbridge's office and the Ministry of Magic. Don't forget your flu powder as we move on to our next location. First up is Hagrid's hut. Here you can see the props that brought Hagrid's home to life. And just a few steps away is the studio's green screen experience. I was super excited to try the green screen and they give you a cloak, which is great in case you don't have your own, and then you're ready to start flying. Once you're on the broom, there's a screen in front of you where you can see everything that's going on. They have a fan going, they're shouting directions at you on where to look and turn. It's so much fun. At the end, they take a couple different pictures of you against different backgrounds, and the video and one photo is about 25 pounds. And the photos come in this great folder that have all kinds of information on visual effects. You'll learn so much more about the making of the films. Okay, now let's step off our brooms and prepare to enter the Forbidden Forest. But don't worry, Buckbeak will be there to guide you. If you made it out of the forest alive, the next set you'll see is Platform 9 and 3 quarters and the Hogwarts Express. You'll be able to board the train and take a look at some of the props used in the films. There's two sound stages in the studios, and everything you've just seen is in the first stage. And just outside is an outdoor area with lots of fun surprises. These include the night bus from the Prisoner of Azkaban and the Hogwarts Bridge. I was super excited to see the bridge. You can get some really great photos here, and if you take them from just the right angle, it looks like you're right in the movie. Next up is number 4, Privet Drive. You can step inside the Dursleys' home and right into their living room. You'll see all the Hogwarts letters that Harry received in the first film. After visiting the Dursleys, make sure to check out the Ford Anglia used in the Chamber of Secrets. Next up, we'll be going to the second soundstage where you can see Gringotts Bank. The set is simply breathtaking. You can walk through at your leisure and check out the amazing set pieces. I also took the opportunity to talk to the goblins. Once you've spoken to the goblins, a very special surprise awaits you in the next room. Next up is Diagon Alley. There are so many fun shops here, make sure to take your time and look around, as sadly this is one of the last sets on the tour. And last but not least, you'll see the Hogwarts model used in the films. This tour was absolutely a dream come true. I always dreamt of visiting the sets and to finally be there and see where they filmed everything was just wonderful. And even if you've been to the theme parks, there's so much to see and do here that you won't experience anywhere else. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe and leave your comments down below. Next week, the magic continues in Scotland, as I'll be showing you all the fun Harry Potter tours and activities that you can do in Edinburgh, so be sure to look out for that. 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.